Thank you. Thank you. So I hope your first course was lovely. Partially So thanks everybody. Um, my name is uh, Shana Senegrafi, as uh, Andy said. So I'm going to talk about uh, from an engineering perspective about uh, what's 4GX. So 4GX for us is, I guess, the, the next step in the evolution of our wireless uh, mobile network. And that's brought about by the addition of the uh, 700 megawatt. And in particular, um, I guess, um, you know, while we've been talking recently about 700 meg publicly, it's really been for us a two year journey. Um, and that started, you know, with the uh, spectrum auctions. And we've been doing a lot of work talking to global carriers, we've been talking to handset vendors and also the chipset manufacturers because I mean it's one thing to introduce a network that's capable but if you haven't got devices then you're going to it's not going to work for us. So and the other thing that we've also done is we've talked to a lot of carriers, other carriers across the world because it's important for us to kind of work if you like as a consortium to influence those hands of vendors. So we're really in a very good position in terms of devices and Andy will talk a little bit more about devices. Um, uh, and as we said, you know, we, we are spectrum rich, so we spent 1.3 billion dollars purchasing 2 by 20 mega of 700 spectrum and 2 by 40 mega of 2600, and that's adding to our already, um, you know, asset of 800. So, um, you know, that puts us in a really good position to be able to say that, you know, we've got the fastest 4G network in Australia. So today I'm pleased to announce that um, we have switched on 4GX in um, Central Hobart and on Wednesday we will be switching on 4GX in parts of Brisbane and in the next week we'll be switching on 4GX in uh, Aladawa, New South Wales, Narrowly, New South Wales, Batemans Bay and Port Macquarie. And in, in Queensland, we'll switch it on in Chinchilla, in Tasmania, in Swansea, and in Victoria, in Shepparton, and in WA, in Bunbury, and uh, Albany. In fact, um, in, in Albany, while well, we said we're going to switch it on, we've actually switched it on. And the reason we switched it on early was that on the weekend we had the uh, 100 year anniversary for the Anzac celebrations. And so we thought it would be good to switch it on early, which we did. And what's interesting is that every time we switched on um, 4GX in any market, what we see is that 20% you know, of the traffic carried at that site goes immediately to 4GX. And so it's two things. I mean, one that tells us about something about the penetration of 4GX devices today. And so you've got the Samsung S5s and iPhone 6s. But the other good news story is that when you've got customers with those capable devices and they start using the 700 spectrum, it actually frees up the 800 spectrum. So people who are on 800 get a, get a better experience as well. Okay, so kind of good, good news all around. So um, you would have heard a few weeks ago we we, we um, a media briefing with our chief operating officer spoke about uh, the fact that we are officially launching 4GX on the 1st of January 2015 and our intention is to increase our 4G coverage to 90% of population by the end of January. But we're not going to stop there, right? I mean, we're going to keep on rolling out the 4G network through 2015 and, uh, you know, and we'll be augmenting uh, capacity as required as demand increases with our uh, spectrum in 2600 as well as 800 as well. So that's all great. And, and the other good news story is that it's around uh, the faster speeds, which uh, Andy's going to demonstrate. So that's about, so every player that we introduce 4GX, we also have 1800 spectrum. So when we do that, we've got the ability to use one of our key features of LTE Advance, which is called carry aggregation. So that's essentially what it means is that you can bond both the 1800 and the 700 meg layer together. And basically what you've got is, you know, a wider, bigger, fatter wireless broadband file. So you can move traffic a lot quicker through there, which ends up in faster speeds. So theoretically, when we do carry aggregation, you can get theoretical speeds of up to 300 megabits per second. But in reality, if you've got a Category 6 device, you can get speeds up to 2 to 100 megabits per second. 
and if you've got a cabin report device, the four GX, you can get up to speeds of between 2 and 75. So an iPhone 6 is an example of a cabin report device, a 4GX device. So the other benefits uh, that you get, obviously, with 700 meg 4 gx is that because it's in that little, what we call a lower frequency band, you're going to get you know, the propagation is going to give us much wider coverage. So that's great news for the country areas because, as you know, we are introducing in the metro any country. So that's great news for the country. You know, in terms of what it brings to the economy, what it brings to education and the community in general to get that wider coverage. But also, it's, still, it's also good news in, in, in metro as well. As Andy said, you know, you get better coverage in the building, better coverage in the bedroom, in the lift wells. Um, and because we've got that broad kite, you're going to get consistently faster speeds in more places. So, it's, it's, it's good news to all of us. And look, the other thing that we're also doing is that as we build this foundation on our network, we're really keen to introduce additional capability. So, so one of those capabilities is LTE broadcast. So, uh, earlier this year, we did a showcase demonstration at the T20 game. Uh, where we showcased LTE Broadcast. Um, this week, we are showcasing LTE Broadcast at Flemington at Spring Racing Carnival. So on Derby Day, we did our LTE Broadcast and we in the birdcage area. So we had, um, we were showing on your device, you could see three uh, video channels. So one, the live feed from Channel 7, one was our TVN Racing Network, and a third video feed had highlights. And then you had a third panel, which you had sort of the, the the betting odds and when the next race is on. And from all accounts, you know, it was really well received from the people who saw that. So that was on Derby Day. We're going to do another showcase tomorrow at Cup Day. And we're going to do a third demonstration on uh, Stakes Day as well. So, so, and we're going to keep doing these de demos. I mean, we have an intention to do some more demos uh, early next year. We'd love to do the Australian Open Tennis. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do that. So, but, so the intention is that we'll keep doing these demos because there's no, um, you know, all around the world when we talk to other global carriers, you know, no one's actually launched it. Everyone's doing these sorts of demos. And we're talking to the people like the Horizons, you know, in terms of what they're doing and we're sharing ideas. So that's one of those sort of value that thing we have. The, the next thing we are hoping to do, and, and we've been doing some trials in our network, um, is um, voice on LT, Baltic. So what we want to do, work well, I want to do a, a Baltic call to one of my colleagues uh, in Perth. So let's see how we go. <laughs> Hi Ron, how are you? That's good, I don't know if you, if you can hear, but there's a whole bunch of um, very nice people from the media here. We're really interested to <laughs> hear what you're saying. Uh, it's sort of the first public multi call that we're making cross country. Um, Right, okay, so look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end that call, Ron, and I'm going to make another call to you. Just stand by, okay? So that was a multi call. Uh, you know, we're, we're trialing the network and um, and we will talk more about it in 2015. And, um, and, and what we want to do is, you know, we're, we're really proud of our core dropout on our network, which is less than 0.4%. So one of the things we want to do before we move forward is to make sure that you know, our customers get a really seamless voice experience as well. And, and I guess you know, if you make a multi call, we want to be able to seamlessly transition onto a 3G circuit switch call where we don't have uh, LTE coverage. Thanks, Ross. I'm going to hang up now. Has everyone got the photos they need? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks, Ross.
Uh, yeah, so we want to make sure that you know that, that seamlessly the working between 4G and, and 3G works as well. So when we do that, we'll, we'll start talking more about um, 4G and 3G. So that's all I was going to say. I'm happy, happy to take questions. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. 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 Thanks.